Christy Hartman here. Welcome back. And this is a gel printed project that I've had in my mind now for a little while. So here's the two that are my favorites. And they're both slightly different because if any of you are experienced gel printers, you know that it's extremely difficult to reproduce a gel print exactly as you have before. This was the first one I did, and then this is the one that I tried to reproduce it on. And I think they both turned out really well, and I like them for various different reasons. But what I started out with was my inspiration for, for this piece. I wasn't going for this exactly, I was just going for portions of it that I really liked. And so you'll see in the video how I accomplish this crazing. And then, of course, the opposite from this is, of course, these two. I did all the line work on it, which I don't have at the end of the video. But I think it really adds to the print. I'm going to use a few things. I'm, of course, going to use an 8 by 10 inch gel plate. Um, I'm also going to use a number of different stencils. This is a Stencil Girl stencils and this is called Organic Circles and Lines and this is L800. Here is another PM Artist Studio. This is called Coffee Rings Uncle Joe and these little parts and pieces do not come with this. These were just some extra that I had from a different order and I use them. This one is called Melty Morocco and it looks like that. The seahorses, and these are called Under the Sea, and here's all the seahorses right there. And I also used this, which is called Flowers and Urchins, and this is another PM Artist Studio stencil. We're going to use the Deco Art Premium in a few different colors, and these colors, these paint colors could change, so don't don't hold me to this. But I'm also going to use the fluid acrylics, and then I've been waiting to do this, but I want to use some of the interference paints.
we're going to use two of the prints that we just completed. We're going to use this one and we're going to use this one and we're going to add these seahorses to it. This one, the seahorses will be added individually. This one, I'm going to block out all of the background and the seahorses will show through. Uh, we're going to use Thalo Blue and we're going to use the golden version of it because I like the coverage of it better and the way this technique works better. For this technique you need a little more paint than what you would normally put on your plate. And I'm going to place my seahorses first. And remember these seahorses will be flipped when we print this. Then we're going to add these. Okay, and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put right over the top of all of this because I really want to isolate the print that's on there. Hmm, that worked. That looks great. And you can still see the patterns underneath. I'm going to pull these off. That's the way it's going to look. Let's pull this. Hmm, I like that. Let's compare for a moment. I have this one done with Thalo Blue. This one was done with Anthroquinone. And I like them both. Now this one I did a little line work on and I may do that to this. This one I just pulled. And I do really like this. I think this turned out just the way I'd hoped it would turn out. I love the brightness coming through the seahorses. Um, I love that I added a little bit of brightness around the edges. This one I did very differently. Um, I did, first of all, my background was darker, but also I kind of isolated the seahorses and then I added these around the outside edge. And I think that my seahorses get lost in this one. So I'm going to do some line work on this one to see if that helps make the seahorses pop out. Curious what you think. So until next time.